Uh, Owens B. Thank you. My name is Brenda Owens B. And I live at 12201 East Doncaster Drive. And I'm not here to talk about AVID, although they did an exceptional job. Regarding the budget, budget there are terms and uh, associated monies that are difficult to understand or follow. Uh, although it is difficult to decipher the budget, there are some questions or issues I gleaned from it. For every 12.86 were 13 teachers. That's not counting master teachers telling them the teachers what they need to do or instructional coaches telling them how to do things for fewer and 13 teachers, you have an administrator making from two to five times the teacher's annual salary. That's one per, thir one per 13, and that's, that doesn't include the managers and the, the liaisons and those folks that are in a, a note. That's just superintendent on down to, to, the, uh, to the administrators in the school. According to the budget, money and or positions were moved from the IT technology area to fund the COO and someone else in administration. When you're trying to move more technology into the classroom, taking funds from that area does not make a lot of sense. Now, since then, I found five other technology positions. Um, but if I read the uh, budget correctly as well, you're transferring Two, two positions to public affairs. Unbelievable. Our own research indicates that instructional coaches have a negative effect on most teachers. They do seem to assist the new teachers, much like seasoned teachers would mentor new teachers then and now. Our own research shows that our interventions are not working but yet we persist in them, taking away precious instructional time from the student and the teachers. When the research indicates that the students actually do better when they are in regular instructions. This is from a report that was given to the school board last year. At almost every turn, control groups did better than whatever program we were testing. Numerous times, any positives were listed with the comment, not statistically significant. And folks, if the difference is not statistically significant, it's the same. That's just the facts. Here's an idea. Why don't we support the teachers with either smaller classes or an aid to split between two teachers who could do some of the administrative paperwork we have placed on the teachers? This would also provide more time for the teachers to teach. Taking the, the aid could take the students to and from special areas, to lunch and back, and to the playground, which would provide additional time for teachers to plan, which is also what they say they need. The aid could monitor class activities while the teacher was working with students who otherwise might have to be pulled out and go to intervention. There is so much to be gained by this particularly in the elementary schools, is it too simple to try? The final item that I still do not understand is providing increases to all certified personnel instead of just the teachers. Do you realize that we have more certified employees than Nashville and many other metropolitan school systems, even when those school systems have more teachers? Why does it say certified employees in the budget, but when you're separating it for the world to see down at the bottom of the budget, you call it teacher increases? Is that really just teacher increases, or is that also certified increases? I understand why teachers resent being used in this way. You can provide equivalent or even increased teacher raises without providing it to all certified employees simply by adjusting the contract days. We know teachers work more hours than their contract time right now. For whatever reason, 
you choose not to, thus using part of that money, increasing the pay of those making two and three times what teachers make instead of raising our teachers level of pay. Thank you. Lauren Hobson.